Well, maybe you've seen one of these import boring heads. Maybe you're even thinking about buying one. And if you are, my advice would be don't. Absolutely do not buy one. Spend uh, a little more money and get a good American-made boring head or just any quality boring head. You can probably spend a slight amount more and get a used good one instead of buying a cheap import that doesn't work well. But if you uh, already have one, like I do, and you don't do a whole lot of boring, and you're just going to try and get by with what you got, then I do have some tips on how to upgrade this. First thing is replace all the set screws. The set screws that come with it are just complete junk. Uh, there's what's left of the ones that were in there, and the heads are all worn out, rounded out. One of them's missing just because the head rounded out and couldn't even be used anymore. Some of the heads aren't even centered in there. They're really just poor quality, so those go right in the trash. So I'll put the part numbers down here for the ones I used, but the ones I got were an M10 by one and a quarter and a M12 by one and a half. Those are the ones that fit my import three quarter inch boring head. And there's a good chance that if you do have one of these, it's probably just like this. It probably use all the same hardware. Because I think these just run off the same manufacturing line somewhere in China. But uh, double check before ordering them. But I'll put the part numbers down below in the video description. Secondly, is uh, there's the assortment of hex keys that come with it. Also junk. The, uh, they managed to round each other out. So... Pitch those, and I just wound up master car and got a four, five, and six millimeter hex key. And these are the high torque versions. Instead of just catching the corners, they actually catch on the flats, so they're capable of putting a little more torque in there. You really shouldn't have to put all that much torque on there. You might on these for tightening them down, but you really shouldn't have to torque too much on them. So replace the set screws and replace the hex keys. And then uh, you're still down to a bit of nastiness. Uh, if you'll notice underneath the gib set screws, there's a ball bearing in there. One of mine is missing. I just replaced all three with 7 30 seconds ball bearing. That's the closest metric, the closest to the metric that was in there. So you got a cut point set screw in there and the way these work is the balls press into the the inner piece and it acts like a gib and it provides friction so when you go to adjust the adjustment screw on the side it has a nice firm uh, adjustment to it and it takes some of the slop out of it so just torque those down just you know short use the short end of the wrench and just snug them up you don't need to go too crazy on that and then you'll be able to feel when you tighten up on the adjustment that there's some tension in there. You'll always have backlash and these import ones have a whole lot of backlash but you're only going to be adjusting one way so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then uh, if you have one of these import boring heads there's a very good chance you'll also have a set of import boring bars there's the larger set. I've also got a smaller set. These are pretty crummy too. Uh, I found the carbide to be all right. It's just little brazed on carbide chips there. I found that carbide quality to be sufficient for the steel and aluminum I was cutting. But the, the geometries are all messed up. There's a good video explaining exactly why the boring head, import boring head and these import boring bars are time wasting junk. I'll put a link to it below. But for now, shout out to Lockcracker for that. And if you want to know how a boring head works, how to use one, uh, Suburban Tools has a good video, so I'll put a link out to that as well. Uh, be forewarned, the Lockcracker is like 26 minutes. He really goes into great detail about why these are not that great. But uh, so I would I would recommend not getting the uh, import boring bars. I really only need one, I think, or one or two. I didn't use many of those others. So I went to Mesa Tools and bought this. It's a three quarter inch. So it fits fits into my three quarter inch. Notice it has a flat on there. That's really important. 
the set screw will now torque down on a flat. And I replace these with flat headed set screws, so the set screws are flat, the side of the boring bars are flat, so that flat on flat it won't mar this. And con contrast that with what you had going on before, completely round boring bar. So if you tighten this down enough that it doesn't turn, you've probably marred the round boring bar. And then good luck getting it out, because you know if you if you marred up the flat, which you're not likely to do in this scenario, but even if you did, there's clearance there on the flat to the round. But if you have a round that's a tight fit and you mess it up down inside, then it'll never clear coming back out. So that's why you want a good boring bar. This one, of course, is a carbide insert, so you can flip it, flip it, pitch it. So you get three three turns out of it, three cutting surfaces, and then just replace that readily available. So really that'll probably do most of the boring I need to do. The only exception is if I need to do some smaller boring. A lot of times I like to bore things that are under three quarters of an inch and this only goes down into a three quarter inch or larger hole. So I couldn't bore anything really small with this. So what I've done is uh, I've got a little three eighths boring bar and it's also a carbide insert uses these tiny little CCMT2151 so little tiny inserts in there so I wanted somehow to get this to work with that so the obvious solution is to make an adapter so I turned a little piece of 304L stainless on the lathe so turn the outside to 3 quarters the inside to 3 eighths and then I put a little hole in the side there a little cross hole so this goes uh, down inside, and then this goes down in there, and the set screw goes through the adapter, it's a clearance hole, and then it hits the flat on here. So when I tighten that down, it's almost self-aligning, get you the geometry you need. And then that one I would snug down a little, not a lot, but just like that. So now what you've got is the set screw goes through the adapter, pushes against the boring bar, which then pushes against the back side. And now I've got an adapter that allows me to use a 3 8 boring bar. Uh, when I ordered from Mesa Tools to get the 3 quarter, I asked Jim about uh, something for 3 8 and his response is, now nah, it's too, too flimsy. And yeah, it will have some flex to it, so you, you're not going to take any big heavy cuts with this, but I'm not going to be taking big heavy cuts on my import milling machine anyway. So this 3 8 works for me. He does have a half. If you have a half inch boring head, in other words, holes here are half inch size, he'll have a half inch version of a boring bar for you as well. But uh, or he's, I think he said he was thinking about making uh, an adapter, I suggest you make a 3 8 to a half adapter so you could use a 3 8 boring head, half inch shank, and that way you could bore holes that are between half and three quarter with that before jumping up to this for three quarters and larger. So those are pretty much all the improvements I've made to this import boring head. New set screws, good quality, all six of them. I uh, made a little adapter to get a 3 8 into it. I bought a three-quarter of good quality, so now I'm using insert tooling. And then you'll still have some backlash. I kind of live with that, I guess. I've managed to do some good work with this, uh, even before uh, doing all the improvements, even with the crummy stuff. It was frustrating, time-consuming, time-wasting, but I was able to do some decent precision work with it. Uh, one other thing I'm thinking about possibly doing is uh, I have an R8, arbor on here. Thinking about getting rid of that, i sort of standardized on Tormach tooling system. It's a three quarter inch shank off, in this case, the R20 collet holder. So I might turn this down so that uh, this looks like this. So make my boring head fit into the Tormach tooling system. I'll lose a lot of rigidity doing that. You know, obviously that three quarter inch shank's not nearly as uh, rigid is this R8 pulled up into a spindle, but again, my milling machine is not very rigid, so I think it'll I'll get enough grip on that uh, uh, three-quarter inch shank in the Tormach tooling system to run a boring head, keep it up in there. If not, 
you know I've I've ruined a, a really crummy import tool. So <laughs> anyway, I might uh, might turn that down or I might just leave it R8. But those are the recommendations I'd have for you. Is uh, if you do small stuff, make an adapter. You might actually be able to buy a drill bushing and just cross drill it, cross drill a drill bushing that, you know, so three eighths on the inside and three quarters on the outside. So get a smaller, smaller boring head up into your larger or smaller boring bar up into your larger boring head, you know, buy a good quality boring bar and replace all the set screws and replace all the hex keys. And I think you'll be a whole lot happier with this than, than what you originally got.